This empty chair represents the addict who died today, not knowing recovery was possible. Hi there. My name's Phil Leahy, and uh, I'm the father of an addict. And I'm Colleen Leahy. I'm his daughter, addict in recovery. Uh, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, actually, Colleen and I were invited by Pat Uliano to be on her show called In Focus. And what she did was gave us the opportunity to discuss drug addiction and the effects it has on the family. Uh, we appreciate her and Bethune TV for giving us that opportunity. But since then, uh, Colleen and I have talked and we thought we'd like to take it to a step further. And, uh, and that's why we're here. Hopefully it'll be informative, uh, interesting, and it's something that Colleen and I have a real passion about. So what we're gonna tell you right now, our first show, we're gonna tell you some of the goals we have and uh, some of the things we hope to accomplish. We're gonna tell you the type of guests that we plan on having. And, uh, and we want to hit a whole variety of addiction, the whole picture of it. And I think you're gonna find out that the stereotype of what most people have of addiction is not what it really seems. So uh, basically we're here to expose addiction. Yeah. Cool. Um, I don't know. Well, this this empty chair right here, it has like that. Like that's the name of the show, and it just has a lot of significance because it represents like you know the addict who didn't you know come into the the rooms of recovery, um, who didn't realize that there was like another way to live. It represents the addict like who died today. So I mean, to me, like um, you know, like that that could have been me. You know, that could have been some of my friends, mothers, fathers, uh, daughters, brothers, sisters, cousins, like anybody. This disease does not discriminate, and like when I say the disease, I mean the disease of addiction. It's the uh, obsession, compulsion, it's, um, it affects you uh, physically, spiritually, mentally, um, you know, financially, uh, it's a family disease. Even though I was using, my family was affected by it. And um, basically like, you know, like thank God for, for Pat Giuliano for, you know, how, let, letting us do this um, a couple of years ago. And, um, and it's called like exposing addiction because it's shining the light on, some, on something that people don't want to look at. They want to pretend that it's not there, that it's not really a problem, that it's not as bad as, you know, as it really is. And this chair represents the fact that, you know, um, this disease is, is progressive, incurable, and fatal. And uh, that's what that, that chair like, um, like represents. And, um, and, and that's why we're here, to let people know that, um, that there's a way out, that there's a solution. You know, just to expose it, bring up, get get all those lies and and the stigma and the stereotype, like you were saying, to just like smash those illusions of just that that it's not a problem because it, it is, it is, it's a, it's a big problem. Right, and we do, and we do have a lot of goals that we try, we're going to try to accomplish. Uh, my personal, one of my personal goals, uh, before I found out Colleen was using heroin, uh, my This is what I thought a heroin addict was. I thought they were low life scum who didn't even deserve to, to be given anything, any help whatsoever. Uh, that is how I truly felt. And I also know that a lot of people out there now who haven't had that affect them in their family in some way still feel that they are low life individuals. Well, <laughs> we're not low lifes. No. Uh, we were middle class, parochial school. Uh, you know, she had a good upbringing. We had a, had a nice house. Uh, we didn't spoil her. We didn't, uh, you know, we didn't give her anything she wanted. Uh, you know, but we, we, she, we, we were a loving family and we all got along. There was nothing wrong, nothing to, that you would expect uh, something like this to happen. My goal. I want families out there to learn what I learned without having to experience the pains that we had to go through. That's my, one of my goals. Okay, um, one of my goals is, 
if if you are if you are there and you're and you're watching this and you and you're having um, like these uh, these feelings like well what 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 if I'm an addict like could I possibly be an addict if you're questioning it then you probably are you know um, because normal people who you know drink and do this recreational stuff like you know they can still show up for work it's not on their mind all the time it's not so basically one of my goals is um, for people to be able to um, like see this and maybe identify with what I'm saying and admit that like I I. I believe I have a problem you know what what can I do about it like I want to help somebody because in the end um, helping somebody else helps me because in the end like I'm, I'm, I'm an addict and you know I am one bad decision away from you know going back to the life that you know it really wasn't a life like the the, the way that I lived my life before was not a life um, so one of my goals is just for even if it's one person to see it and and, and spark something in them and, um, and, and let them seek out help because that person could get help and make themselves well again and, and then they can help somebody else and that's kind of how it goes. It's like a chain reaction of just one addict helping another um, for themselves. Yeah. And, and when we talk disease, we want people, you know, a lot of people, and again, those who live outside the addiction family, I guess if you wanted to call it like that, they don't see it as a disease. They see it as someone who just chooses to, well, maybe you made a bad choice when you were young, maybe for whatever reason, but once you're started, it is a disease. And, you know, you could compare it to sugar diabetes, something like that. It's treatable, really not curable, but treatable. But the disease of addiction has, uh, has something about it that really doesn't relate to any other disease. If you have sugar, if you have cancer, if you have any kind of terminal disease, someone who has it looks to get treatment. An addict doesn't really, an addict is empowered by the addiction and really doesn't even want treatment. And those of us that are families, and, and again, I belong to a support group and we you know, do everything in our power to get the addict to look into recovery. That's the big key. I mean, the treatment is one thing, but getting the addict to actually agree to a treatment admit is, that they even have a disease is exact. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it, getting to admit they have a disease is, and getting treatment. So most people that have certain types of disease want treatment. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that way no. with the disease of addiction. An addict will go around, you know, um, any any possible way um, to stay in denial, um, you know, uh, to 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 avoid avoid treatment because basically, like an addict who's using addict alcoholic, it's it, it's all the same thing. Um, the substance doesn't really matter whether it's alcohol or drugs. It's all the same, the same end result. Um, but if you if you know if you're an addict, you're an alcoholic, and, and, and you know that you, you have it, and you know, and someone says, you know, treatment, like you know, doctors, friends, family members. Well, maybe you should do this. Like I suggest, maybe you do that. Well, I, I don't need it. I don't need it. Or, or I'm going to try it this way instead. I'm going to try it my way. You know, I can figure this out for myself. Or it's really not that bad. You know, anything to try and like you know get around. Um, not using, you know, because the disease of addiction is like, is really powerful. It's very, very powerful. Um, it's, it's the strongest thing that I've ever encountered in my life. And to go back to what you were saying before about like, you know, thinking that, you know, a, a heroin addict is just, you know, with, with a trash bag walking down the street. Yeah. To, I, I'm an addict and I used to think like that. I used to think like that. I never thought that I would be, you know, a heroin addict. I never thought that, that my life would get to the, the horrible bottoms that it did. Um, so, I mean, that's why this is like exposing addiction. So it, this disease doesn't discriminate. You can live on the, the top of the hill in, in North Andover and, and your parents are, are doctors and all this stuff and you, can, and, and you have the disease of addiction and it's gonna affect your life the same way as somebody who's maybe like lower class who had some trauma and some drama in their lives. It, it does not discriminate. It, it'll, it'll go for, for anybody, for yeah. anybody. And, and, when it, and again, when it comes to the parents, <coughs> another goal that I have and that I've accomplished actually, obviously I wouldn't be here, is to, to get parents to try not to feel the shame and the embarrassment uh, of, of having someone who's an addict. You know, uh, don't tell anybody, you know, like it's a secret. Well, you wanna know something? 
It is a disease. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. And it's nothing that you can pay your way out of. No. You can't, I don't know how many little treatments we had with you. You can't buy an addict mm -mm. into recovery. No. It don't work. No. And your secrets will keep you sick. Yeah. They will keep you really, really yeah. sick. You know. and, and, and again, you know, again, I belong to a support group for the loved ones of addicts. We've been together almost six years. Colleen has been to some of our meetings. And, uh, and it helps. It helps to be around people who understand. And again, the biggest goal in this show, I think, on both of our ends, is to get people to have an understanding of what it's all about. You know, I mean, there's so many aspects. As a matter of fact, maybe now might be a good time to tell them some of the things we plan on doing on this show as far as guests. Okay. Um, well, I don't know, like you'll, you'll hear us say things like the, the, it's like the language of recovery. You know, you get like the disease of addiction and that it's progressive and curable and fatal and that I go to um, a 12-step uh, program. I, I go to 12-step meetings. Um, the 12 steps are basically like um, basically directions on how to learn how to, how to live life, you know, clean and, and, and peaceful and, and all this like good stuff, like without the use of drugs. Um, you'll hear about like sponsors. Um, basically like I've been clean for a little over three and a half years. Um, I have a sponsor. That's basically someone who's been around a little bit longer than me. Um, well, a lot longer. She actually just celebrated nine years um, clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. And, um, and she, you know, She's been around a little bit longer than me, so she kind of helps me and like and guides me through the step working process. You know, like we have literature, we have books that we use. Um, it, it's really like really involved uh, right. because it's all about changing from the inside out. This right. isn't, you know, it's not easy, but it's doable. It's definitely doable. You know, so um, you know, we have like you know, like my sponsor. I have women that I sponsor because I've been around for a little bit. There's women that are just coming in the doors that need help, and obviously I'm doing something right. Because, you know, I've got a little bit of time under my belt now, right. so I help them. Um, so we'd, we'd like to do that. Like have the, It's called a sponsorship family. Yep. You know? And as a matter of fact, our next program will hopefully, you know, if we can get everybody here, we'll be yeah. focusing just on that. But we also expand, we also plan to expand the guests. Uh, uh, you know, I've spoken with the superintendent of schools, Judy Scanlon, and hopefully her and Dean Bruder will come to a show and maybe we can kind of outreach to the, to really where the, the addiction starts in the school system. Mm. We, we'd like to get someone from the sheriff's department to show that the money being spent on drug addicts in jail could not only be a lot more inexpensive, but uh, productive if there was more recovery places so that these poor addicts don't have to wait on a list to get into it. They don't got to wait on a list to get into jail, but no. they got to wait on a list to get into recovery. Right. All right? So we want, we, we, we want to have people from recovery, halfway houses and so forth like that, explain to us the process. So we really want, and here's something I want to tell to all of you that are listening. You may think that Colleen and I may be a little bit too easygoing or, or too, too, too catering to the, uh, the addict. If you think that the approach we have, you know, is not the way to go, if you a little bit more of a, I don't want to say hard, you know what, but Tough if you, love. yeah, uh, <laughs> just then, say no. You know, call in MTV, MCTV, and you will only be too glad to have you come on the show and discuss addiction, and we will take, you know, how you feel about it, and. Uh, and you know, maybe we can learn something from you and maybe you can learn something from us. We don't, we wanna hit all aspects of addiction, recovery, how people feel about it, their opinions, you know, even if they may be different than ours, we can accept that and yeah. we can live with that. Yeah. So uh, hopefully a year from now, we will have had so many different guests cover so many different topics and so many different avenues. And again, always feel free. Call in uh, MCTV. If you think there's something we're missing, if you want to come in and dispute what we say, if you have a, you know, maybe, maybe you're a fan of the methadone clinic, or something, we will take anybody that wants to come in and discuss 
their concerns or their approach towards with addiction, you know, in that respect like that. Any, any input on it, whether it's good, bad, indifferent, whatever, um, maybe, maybe you figured out like a, a way that, 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 could, like, that could help, um, any kind of different viewpoint, anything that basically brings attention to the whole world of addiction and recovery is a good thing. Because right. the more it's talked about, the easier people are to talk about it. It's not something that's like, like you said, like so like hush hush. It's like, I, I, I want to talk about it. And I'm, I'm like excited for recovery. Like I'm excited for this, for this show because it, it needs to be like, it needs to be put out there. Yeah. Like it, it, it really does, you know? So obviously you can see the way we both feel about it. Uh, we've kind of given you a little idea of what our goals are, uh, what our projects are as far as guests for the next show. Uh, I think you're going to find it interesting. I know Colleen and I will because we're looking forward to really expanding what we want to do. Yeah, and even uh, like a couple of, um, you know, like, like my, my friends, um, people that I go to meetings with, people that I, that I talk to and, you know, text and all that stuff, like people in my recovery world, like they have like some clean time. You know, these people who are just, you know, street addicts or whatever people want to categorize them as, like that's okay, like whatever makes you comfortable, but basically addicts who are using, they came into recovery, they did some work, um, they've been clean for a little bit, and now they are working in, in treatment centers, you know, like they go to school, like they right. get degrees, um, you know, doctors, lawyers, like they got initials after they name, like all that stuff, right. um, accomplishing goals. And now they are helping addicts who are coming in and, and that's how it just keeps going. And now that you're talking about accomplishing goals, I don't know how much time we have left, but what I would like to do is take the remainder of our time. Uh, we have, I, I just had a bird tell me we have 10 minutes left. <laughs> so uh, what I'd like to do is, you know, um, most of you haven't seen Colleen for two years, mm. and uh, you know, whenever possible, we like to really put a positive spin on recovery, just to show that, you know, to, to give those who are going through the rough time, you know, something to show that, yeah, it does work. So, since the last time we were here, Colleen was living with me, uh, she was still part-time, waiting for full-time, uh, driving around in a car that... Uh, she had to roll the dice and hope it ran. Yeah. Why don't you fill us in on the last couple of years in 10 minutes? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. I could do it in nine and a half. Um, <laughs> good, because we got to close for the last 30 okay, seconds. Okay, good. Um, basically, like, my life is is absolutely unbelievable today. And I'm not saying that, like, you know, bad things don't happen. I don't have bad days and this and that. But because of working a program, I know how to, like, deal with things and, you know, and feel those icky feelings that I don't like. And then I just, like, keep it moving. You know, I'm able to, like, show up for things today. Like, I, I came here, like, from work. You know, I'd rather, you know, go home, take a shower, and go to my meeting and hang out with my friends. But... But this is important. Like, if it wasn't for stuff like this and, and me getting help, like, I wouldn't have a job. Um, you know, and, and this, like, this, this isn't how it has to be. Like, that's not my story today. You know, this, this empty chair doesn't represent me because I decided to, um, you know, to get some help and, and, and change my life, basically. Um, I am not the same person that I was. Um, in, in four more months, I'm going to have four years clean. I couldn't get four days clean. I couldn't get four minutes clean, four hours clean, like whatever. I felt hopeless and helpless and, and, and everything in between. Because of, uh, you know, 12-step program and meetings and people like, you know, bringing awareness to this and getting some help, like I've been able to change my life around. I went from sleeping on, on his couch, you know, I didn't, I didn't have my own room. I had the couch, which I was grateful for because <laughs> I was allowed to be in the house because there was a time that I really wasn't welcome in, the, in that place. And, and I understand that today. And I, I don't hold any resentments. Like I wouldn't have let me in the house either because I couldn't be trusted. Um, but like I have, you know, I got like keys right here. You know, where are they? I got keys to, to a brand new car. I got keys to a, a place that I just moved into in, um, in, in Haverhill and, uh, and it's nice. It's really nice. It's like a, like a half a house. I can show up for my job. Like I get, I get promotions. I have people that like trust me today. I have people that, I have people that ask me how I stay clean. They're like, well, look at all this like stuff that you got. The outside stuff is nice. The inside stuff is better. You know, I love myself today. If you're out there and, and, and you're using, um, you're using drugs, you're drinking too much, whatever it is, um, and you get that feeling inside of you where it's like you're just not happy. Every day you're not happy. If you're sick of being miserable, if you're sick of like waking up and being instantly angry that you woke up, I used to feel like that. And, um, and that's, not, that's not my life today. You know, like I said, like I'm doing extremely well at my job because I'm able to show up for it and, and work really hard. Um, 
you know, I got this really nice, like, shiny car. Like, I've never had anything that nice in my life, you know, like, ever. Um, you know, I, I, got the, I got the place. I got, I got a cat, you know, that I can actually afford to get him food. <laughs> Can't say I'm crazy about that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just being able to do, like, just, just normal things and be able to accomplish things, and it feels really good, mm. you know, like... Um, just getting like this this clean time, you know, like we get like keychains for amounts of clean time, and um, you know, and I have this black one, and it represents like multiple years. And I used to see people getting that, and I was like, how do you do that? Like how how like how how do you do it? And they said, just keep coming, just keep coming, and that's what I did, you know, and. Um, I don't know. Like sometimes I sit back and think, and, and and I look around at like the stuff that I have, or or, or um, you know, when people ask me to speak at meetings, and and basically my experience, strength, and hope, my experience, what it was like, what it was like when I was using, you know, like what happened, like how, what, what happened that made me come into recovery, that bottom, that lonely place, you know, inside and outside, when everything just seems to fall apart more and more on a daily basis and what it's like now it's like the hope the hope that it is possible the hope that this chair doesn't have to be for you you know because it doesn't I know you think I, I whenever you hear somebody that oh you know they, they this one died of an overdose and this one died an addict using is always thinking and I know because I used to think this but that won't happen to me that won't happen to me but it does it can it does like you know today like addicts died today and that's that's what this chair like represents this this isn't my story today it doesn't have to be your story today you know you can have a life that's like just absolutely like unbelievable you know it kind of like takes your breath away sometimes and you feel like blessed you know mm. it's awesome and, and again you know as important it is you know all the accomplishments you made uh, and I know I was one of your biggest enablers, your mother, so forth like that. We happen to have someone in our family that wasn't quite into enabling as much as I was. I guess we know who, or she's on camera one or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, we, we, want, we want families to understand that they play a big part in getting their kids or their loved ones started. And it's the hardest thing in the world to do. The hardest thing in the world to do is to throw your daughter out and says, look it, I can't do this no more. You know, when you're ready to get help, give me a call and, you know, and, and we'll see if we can find a place for you to go and so forth, you know, which is, you know, obviously our story. Yeah. But it's not just our story. Uh, an addict really doesn't have much of a chance if someone's going to continue to bail them out. Yeah. If I if I didn't if I didn't get completely cut off if my family didn't say listen we love you but we, we gotta love you from a distance that was the the most loving thing that they could have done was um was cut off the money supply cut off the place to live no I'm not gonna give you money for a car no I'm not gonna give you money for gas again you know I'm not gonna give you money for food again even though I, the money never went towards that you know like you have to hit that bottom and if someone keeps putting a pillow underneath you when you try and hit your bottom. You know, you, you, you're not going to stop. Right. I, I wouldn't have stopped. No, and as a parent, you know, we have the opportunity. You're right. You have to hit bottom. But as a parent, we have a chance to maybe raise that bottom up to, you know, to get you out on your own before you're, you're in such a bad place, you know, as far as, I mean, you want to know something? We have people in our group that are so concerned about their kids that they go to jail and the parents are happy because their kid is safe in jail. Imagine thinking that, yeah. that your, yeah. your daughter or your son is safer in jail. Okay, that's addiction. They're not using yeah, in the world. Yeah, exactly. Because they know that they're not, that they're not using, they're not putting something right. in them that could kill them right away. Yeah, and, and, and again, you know, we're not gonna come here every week and we're not gonna tell you all these stories and horror stories. We are going to educate you and us, hopefully with the guests that we have coming in, about the whole picture. We are going to try to expose addiction. And, uh, and again, not only hopefully will everybody out there learn something, but the knowledge that we'll get as we go along. Like I said, uh, we have people from the uh, Psychological Center, Recovery Center, uh, uh, from the Moore organization. Yep. These are all people who work diligently to help people get in recovery. And let's yeah. face it, what I said about people getting on a list to get in, I, I mean that. 
I mean, some people have to Two, be on a list. Two, three months, four months. Yeah. Yeah. These are people who actually really want to get into a place, and they can't. And yeah. they can't get in. It's got to be treatment, 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 recovery, yes. treatment, recovery. I mean, to just take an addict and throw them in jail, right. even, though, even though their parents feel that they're safer there, right. they're not going to get better. Right. They're not going to get better. It's got to be treatment. It's got to be recovery. You know. and, and parents and loved ones have to deal with the fact, and I always hated this one, that relapse is part of recovery. Yes. And it happens. And it, it's not a requirement. It doesn't, it doesn't have to, but it does happen. It does happen. It does happen. So basically, this is going to be what our show's about. Colleen and I are extremely excited about it. Uh, we're happy to have our volunteers come and help us out and tell us what is going on. Uh, we appreciate, again, Pat and MCTV for really starting this process and giving us the... Uh, the go ahead and, and actually, you know, the idea that this is a topic that can be ongoing, that can be discussed, that can be learned, that can be educated. Uh, we're really looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah, open up some eyes and help people. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll be having another show next month. Uh, hopefully, Colleen will be here with her sponsor and her sponsee. And the show again, will be specifically on recovery and the part that the sponsorship plays. Colleen will not be a host. She'll be a guest. <laughs> I'll get to ask a couple of questions, then I'll sit back and just let them have uh, go at it. Sounds good. So uh, I'd like to thank, again, MCT for allowing us to do this show. We appreciate it. Again, the volunteers. Uh, <laughs> In a million years, I never thought you and I would be having a Ever. relationship. We'd be sitting down here talking about a subject like this. Unless and, uh, we were throwing the table. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, I think uh, hopefully we can, uh, like I say, bring a little knowledge, bring some laughs, because there are some funny stories, because I've heard you speak and everybody else speak. There are some funny stories. And... Uh, and it's I real. This, it's all real. This isn't, it's this all isn't scripted. Real. This isn't anything. This is, this is yeah. real life stuff. Life and death stuff. It's, it is life and death. And again, you, you will find some humor. So uh, for myself, uh, Phil. Colleen. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to say thank you for joining us. I hope you to continue to join us in the coming yes. months. And again, don't be afraid to contact MCTV. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love your suggestions, your input. And again, whether... You agree with this, you don't agree with this, you know, don't let that bother you because, you know, we're here, we want to learn as much as we can as, as, as well as, you know, give you the experiences we have and those who come into us. So that being said, we'll say good night, I guess. Yes, good night. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks. <laughs>